Welcome back to this R programming video series on how to get started with R. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create a project and I'm going to explain to you what a project is. We're going to talk about how to import data. I'm going to teach you how to install packages and you are going to love packages. They rock. And we're going to talk a little bit about manipulating data. I want you at the end of this session to feel as if you can do something in R. Okay, so let's get started. If you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. Right, we're looking at RStudio. At this point, you've installed R, you've installed RStudio. If you're not familiar with this environment, there's these four quadrants. I've got a video that goes through that and introduces you to this environment, so have a look at that video. I'm not going to go through it right now. You're wanting to get going, right? So at the top on the left, you've got a little pull-down menu and you've got some options, things you can start. There's an R script, R notebook. We're going to go through each of these in detail in future videos. I'm going to suggest ignore this, these for now, right? Start off by starting a project. So just to the left, you're going to see create a project button. And the reason is if you write your script in the context of a project that you've started, R will know where to look for your data, where to put all of your outputs, your graphics, etc., etc. It stores everything quite neatly in one place. It sets what, you, what we call your working directory. Uh, and that's quite a useful thing. You're going to find it more and more useful down the line. So my suggestion is right off the get-go, get into the habit of when you're starting a project in R, click on the start a project button. You've got an option. You, and I'm going to suggest create a new directory, a new project, give the project a name, and I'm going to call it test1, like that, and say create project. Okay, so R has created a project. We can see the project down here at the bottom on the right. Just so that you can see what's happening at the same time on my hard drive, if we have a look at my hard drive, R has created a folder called test1 click on that folder and there we can see the little icon that represents the project. If R was closed and we went to this place on my hard drive, clicked on that icon, R would open up in that project and we would see all of the script and the data and the outputs from that project all in one place. It would be very neat, it would be lovely, it would be poetry. You're going to love it. Okay, so that's starting a project. Okay, so how do we get some data into R? Well, let's go back to our hard drive. That's the folder that was created when we created our project. Go in there. I'm going to cut and paste some data into that folder. If we go back into R, we can see that data sitting here. Now, that data hasn't been imported yet. We still need to do that, but at least we know where to find it. Now, to bring that data into R, into our environment, make it into an object that we can use, there's a few things we can do. And I'm going to show you the things not to do, but just so that you know that they exist. If we clicked, on this data down here, you've got the option of import data set. You can do that, that's fine, but I'm going to say don't do that. Uh, there's other options. We've got import data set up here. Again, don't do that. The best thing to do is to use your code, get, the, get your actual script to go and fetch the data so that when you run your code, it's automated. It automatically goes, fetches the data, creates an object, puts it in your environment, and you never have to think about it again. So that's the way to do it, and I'm going to show you how. Right, here we've got some code, and this code is going to import some data, and it's also going to do a little bit of analysis, and I'm going to go through the code one step at a time just to teach you how it is that I've done this. Right, just so that you know, when you write code here in the source, up on the top left, if you, when you've written the code, you put go to File, Save As, and you save it, and it pops down here into your project, which is all nicely and neatly kept in your working directory down on the bottom right. Okay, so let's go through this one step at a time. Okay, we're going to start off by looking at the read CSV, read.csv function. Of course, we can import any kind of data. We can import data straight from Microsoft Excel. We can import SPSS files. We can import Stata files. A CSV is a nice and simple file. If you've got an Excel spreadsheet, you can save it as a CSV. I usually save files as CSVs and import them that way because it's uncomplicated and it's not messy. But we're going to create videos that look at each of these individually and, 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 and we'll go through them one at a time. For this video, we're just going to stick with a nice, simple CSV file. So we've got a function that says read CSV in brackets and in inverted commas that's important. We have the file name and the file extension. Now if I didn't have this little arrow over here, if I just did the function and the file, it's going to look in our working directory. I push command enter to run that or I click on run over there. So command enter and 
down here in the console we can see there's our data now that's not particularly useful to us right now as it is because we want that to be an object that we can use so if I give that a name and I say my data and create this little arrow with the less than and dash which is kind of like an arrow it says everything that's over here gets assigned to that name push control enter and in our environment on the left we can see my data sits there we can have a look at what the variable variables within that are and that's our data sitting and it's been read in and it's within R and we can start using it so we want to view our data now for the most part R works with functions and objects so we've got an object, my data, sitting in our environment over there, and we've got functions. A function is this function called head. If we type in head, my data, and push command enter or control enter or run up there, it's going to give us the first six rows of data. If we do tail my data, it's going to give us the last six rows of our data. And if we do view my data, it's going to produce the data in a little spreadsheet that we can look at. So let's have a look at that. Right. Remember with this kind of data, this is a nice flat spreadsheet. We've got each row is an observation and each column is a variable. Let's go back to our four quadrants. We can also view the data if we're looking at our script. We can also view the data by clicking on my data. We can click on the object and it'll also bring it up over there. Now we might want to extract specific components of our data. So remember we've, we've said that rows are observation, columns are variables, and if we put my data and we use these square brackets to tell R where to look, the first number after the square bracket tells it what row to look at, and the second number what column. Right? So if we run that, it's going to give us blue. Well, what is blue? Blue is the first row and the third column, the variable eye color. So we got this cell over here popped out. If we didn't put a row and we just put comma three, it's gonna do the entire column. So let's run that. And there we go, blue, brown, blue, brown, blah, 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 blah. That's basically spitting out this entire column. And this column, this variable name is eye color. So we can also do my data dollar sign eye color and it does the same thing. Okay, before we start doing some analysis, I just want to talk to you a little bit about packages because you're going to find these things tremendously useful, right? Packages are pre-programmed functions that solve very specific problems. They expand the R vocabulary. To install a package, you use this function, install packages, right? And then open brackets, you need the inverted commas, you put the name of the package, close brackets. You only ever need to install a package once. Once it's installed on your computer, it's there. But when you want to use it, in your script, you need to include either library or require, either of those two, you don't need them both. You put that into your script, it'll go and fetch that package, it'll use it, and then from that point onwards in your script, you have access to additional commands and functions. So of course, I have previously installed the tidyverse package. At this point, I wanna push command enter or control enter to run this line of code that uses it. So bada bing. Now I'm gonna show you how to do an analysis in R, using some of this vocabulary that comes with the tidyverse, you're going to see how easy and intuitive and straightforward it is. And when you see how easy it is, you're going to be really excited about analyzing your own data. Okay, so the first thing we do is we type in our data frame. We start off with my my data. That's our that's our object. Okay. If I push Command Enter or Control Enter on a PC at this point, it brings up the whole data frame. And this is a small data frame. Okay. Shift Control 2 to have a closer look at the console, right? This is our whole data frame. Now, data frames are usually much, much bigger than this. We may have hundreds of variables. What do we do? We want to select just a few of them. We might, in this case, want to select just name, age, and height, right? Shift Control 0 to go back to all four quadrants. So we want to select that. Before we select it, I want to teach you about a little thing called the pipe operator, right? Shift Command M. That's the pipe operator, right? It's a percent greater than percent. It looks a little bit like a pipe. And what it means is whatever you've done on the left hand side, whatever that line of code is, gets piped into the next line of code, right? So if you've done some sort of change or manipulation, that change gets piped into. And you'll see more how that works as, as, we, as we go through this example. Now, you would ordinarily, you could just carry on typing to the right. I like to, after a pipe operator, go to the next line. R will see that as continuing on the same line. It doesn't really matter. 
Okay, it looks like an error is popping up there. It's not. You can ignore that red. Okay, so we've said my data. We've got in a pipe operator, which just means and then. So my data and then, right, we've said we want to select name, age, and height. So it is literally as simple as that. Select, open brackets, name, age, height. Command enter. Okay, now we can see in our console, and I'm going to zoom in on the console with shift control 2. We can see we originally had the entire data frame. We wanted to select a few of the variables, in this case name, age, and height, and there they are. Now we might want to only look at people that are less than 24 years old. So another pipe operator, which is and then, go to the next line, filter by those that are aged less than 24. And we might want to say, let's, let's, let's make this a bit more complicated and say age less than 24 um, and height uh, greater than 1.78, for example. Okay, let's have a look at what that does. And voila, let's have a look at that. Well, we don't need to zoom in on the console because we can see right here there were just three rows that met that criteria. We might now want to add here another pipe operator and then arrange by height and it'll arrange it by height, command enter and there we go, voila. So if you are serious about learning how to analyze data and you want to learn R programming, then hit the subscribe button now and hit the little bell notification if you want to get notified of future videos. Please hang up and try again.